Okay, we can now move on to uh, board member comments. And uh, before anybody wants to comment, I just, uh, uh, for myself, and of course on behalf of the board, Tim, welcome. Welcome back, I guess you might say, but uh, welcome. Should we sing? We're glad. <laughs> Should we sing? Not, back. not gonna sing to him, sorry. Uh, any other board member comments? Anybody wanna make comments before we move on? I have a comment. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I just wanted to mention, it was really loud, sorry. I just wanted to mention something I had discussed with the administrators um, that I'd like to see our district consider adopting, which is uh, a school bus tracking app in conjunction and cooperation with our bus company. There are many apps like this that already exist on the market and we would need to investigate costs, um, but the benefits are that both parents and older children would know where their bus is and when it's set to arrive. And this would be really beneficial, obviously, in the winter and in bad weather. Um, we could minimize the amount of time that students would need to wait for the bus in bad conditions, which would hopefully reduce calls t to the district with issues about the status of a bus and build a positive rapport with the community in regards to transportation. Um, and I see this as, you know, these apps are similar to like when you use Uber or Lyft or order food from Grubhub. So the technology exists and the apps exist. Um, and I'd like to see this investigated. And uh, Dave Hall presented a memo to me earlier this afternoon um, with that information. Great. So I'll have that. And I even said to Lori, we'll have this for the board in November since um, we got it this afternoon. So uh, we awesome. have that. We have the costs, what it would take, what it would look like. Um, it is an add-on to the Versatrans product that we currently use um, for routing our buses. But yes, there's a cost. Um, and But yeah, Allie asked us to look into that. I thought it was a great idea. Mr. Hall did the investigative work. I got that memo this afternoon about all the details of it. And so I'll have all of it for you in November. Yeah, thank you for looking into that so sure. quickly. Thank you. Any other board member comments? Okay. Uh, Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, there being none, I, I am told we don't have anybody signed up for public comments on the agenda items only. So we could move on to the, <coughs> excuse me, the approval of the minutes. Uh, this is uh, the minutes of the uh, September 6th, wor 6th wor uh, work session meeting, and I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the September 6th, 2018 work session slash legislative meeting per the attached. I'll second. Is there any discussion? I'll have to abstain. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, do we have a solicitor's report this evening? No. Okay. No, no. okay. Olaf, are you flying solo over there? There's a student, student rep report? So. Uh, it's all yours. If you can get okay. close to the mic so we can hear you. <clears throat> good evening, every. Oh, that was loud. That's all right. <laughs> That's great. Let it go. We can hear you. That's good. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so. Now that school has begun, we're about a month or two into the school year, as you guys know. Uh, numerous different clubs and events have been going on in the high school, uh, just the high school alone, actually. There have been plenty over in the middle school as well. Uh, as we move into the, into the fall, uh, the senior students are preparing to move on to their careers following high school, including uh, college, moving into unions, or different post-secondary uh, destinations. Uh, in addition, to help prepare these students, the school so graciously has offered us these different opportunities to know what we're doing. So, for example, there are different, there have been different uh, arrangements where students can meet up with teachers and they can learn about how to apply for FAFSA, which is a student loan uh, company, I believe. Yeah. Um, so that's very assistant, uh, especially if you don't get. So, uh, scholarships, for example, in a school, it can help you a lot to pay for post-secondary school. Additionally, as the season begins, the drama club has begun rehearsing for their stage rendition of the classic TV show, The Beverly Hillbillies, which I'm sure many of you know. It's a very funny comedy show. You probably don't remember that, though, do you? <laughs> oh, no, I watch that okay. all the time. As a <laughs> um, plus, the music department is preparing for their annual fall concert. That will be on October 17th in the middle school auditorium, which is right over there. The concert will feature the assorted uh, music department groups, which would include the band, the orchestras, and the different choirs as well. Uh, then finally, high school students are preparing for their annual homecoming dance, which will be next Saturday. Uh, tickets went on, sa on sale all week this week. And then uh, Homecoming King and Queen will be voted on next week by the students. It will be set up with a donation thing where if you would like to vote for someone, then you can donate a certain amount of money per, ter, or 
toward that student. And then uh, in addition to voting, you're also supporting the school fund. Oh, nice. So uh, I believe that is it. Great, for great report. Thanks, all. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. And yes, ma'am. I'd just like to add one thing. You mentioned the FAFSA, and I'd like to encourage any college-bound senior who's thinking about it to definitely fill that out and apply because many universities use that for grant and gift aid as well. So it is true it's used for loans, but it also uh, is, is required oftentimes for scholarships. So um, it definitely fill it out and take advantage of whatever opportunities you know, that you can to help with your, your education. Good point. Thank you, Dr. Nolz. Thank you. I'm glad we're you know, taking some extra time and helping students with that. Absolutely. Um, superintendent's report. I actually have two. Um, All yours. <clears throat> Amanda, are we going to do points of pride over there? Or here? Yeah. It's better over there? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to read the, the public enrollment committee update from here, and then I'm going to go over there to run the points of pride, which is next. Um, we had a public enrollment planning committee meeting on Thursday. Uh, no, it was last Wednesday. And I just want to kind of give everybody an idea where we are and, and what we're going to be looking at as we kind of go through this, the rest of this school year. So after Shelby Stuman's demographic study was received in 2015, the, the decision was made to redistrict several neighborhoods to address enrollment growth that was occurring in our predominantly the McIntyre and Ross attendance areas. At that time, I made a public statement that our enrollment was forecasted to increase district-wide through the year 2025 and that we would once again need to address our student population growth within the next three to five years. We are currently in year three of our new boundary reconfiguration and the district must review options to make decisions to meet the needs of our growing district. I began the committee meeting by welcoming everybody and thanking them for their interest and participation. And we reviewed our current enrollment numbers by school, by grade, by section, and we reviewed the historical yearly growths of our district. When reviewing the current enrollment versus building capacity, it is clear that our elementary buildings operating on a K-6 model and utilizing our current class caps, which We'll, we will soon meet or exceed capacity in one or more of our buildings. Our board policy of class size has enrollments in grades kindergarten and first grade at 23, second and third grade at 25 students, fourth through sixth grade enrollments should not exceed 27 students. For the 2018-19 school year, we have zero classrooms available at Highcliff, one at Ross, three at McIntyre, and four at Westview. As we move students to the next grade level for 2019-20 and project a similar size kindergarten, we actually get space back to us. We will have two available classrooms at Highcliff, Ross, and McIntyre, and we will have five at Westview. These projections do not include students moving into or out of our district. Based upon this, it appears that we will be under our current configuration for 2019-20 school year, but we will need a contingency plan in the event one or more of our schools reach a point where they are over capacity. So the committee shared some ideas and options for addressing our space and capacity issues, including an increase of class size, half-day kindergarten, moving sixth grade to the middle school, reconfiguring our elementary model from a K-6 to various other models like K-2 <coughs> and 3, 4, 5, 6, create additional spaces on our elementary schools by constructing additions at Ross, looking at ways to add space at Highcliff, or finding property within the district to build an additional building. I will explore and evaluate each of these options and any other option that's brought forth, and I will provide my complete report on the options to the Board of Education at our November 8th meeting. Uh, an enrollment planning committee meeting will be scheduled after the board reviews and discusses my report in November. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to go to the podium for this one. Mm -hmm. Matt, Matt, thanks for your, uh, we got your uh, information. So. All right, we had a lot of really good things happen to the school district in the month of September, and that's what this report is. This is our prejudice and an excellence report for the month of September. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? It works. There you go. A little bit of a delay. Put the, put the dancing music on. <laughs> Congratulations, Joe Welsh. Middle school teacher Joe Welsh has been selected the 2018 National History Teacher of the Year by the Gilder Lehrman Institute of American History. Welsh will be honored at a ceremony at Yale Club in New York City on October 10th. For the first time, our elementary students are taking part in computer science classes as part of their six-day cycle. As the year progresses, they will be coding, programming, and in general, learning valuable soft skills such as problem solving, teamwork, 
and communication. Students in various North Hills Elementary schools took part in fall festivals and Johnny Appleseed Days as they combined learning with apple-themed activities. The College Board named 51 North Hill students AP Scholars following their outstanding performances on the college level advanced placement exams. This is nearly 80% of the exam takers scored three or above on the exam's five point scale earning them college credits. Westview and Ross elementary students heard from the children's advocate and award winning author Trudy Ludwig during Authors Day activities. Ms. Ludwig spoke with each grade about friendship and social and peer issues during their day-long event. Our sports officiating and principals of coaching class hosted NCAA women's basketball referee Mike McConnell who talked about sports officiating principals and spoke with our high school students about what it takes to be an official at such a demanding level, the benefits and challenges of the job, and how they could get started as a sports official. That's not the end. <laughs> the North Hills Marching Band held their 58th annual festival in September, and a total of 10 bands participated in the event. High School History Club members held a voter registration drive during all of lunch periods in advance of our November general election. They plan to do another drive in the spring prior to the 2019 primary. North Hills took part in the nationwide Start With Hello week to roll out our new Sandy Hook Promise programs to students. Start With Hello helps students gain the skills they need to create a culture of inclusion and connectedness and encourages them to reach out and include those who may be dealing with social isolation. Ross Township Police Department officers visited second graders at McIntyre Elementary where they introduced students to three of the department's canine officers. Students at Highcliffe Elementary, McIntyre Elementary, and Ross Elementary participated in walking and running fundraisers to support their building's parent-teacher organizations. The North Hill School District will hold homecoming activities on October 12th at 7 p.m. at Martorelli Stadium. Community members and alumni are invited to attend as the homecoming court will be announced prior to kickoff at 7.30 p.m. when North Hills takes on Armstrong High School in varsity football. Each club, activity, and athletic team at the high school will be represented by a student representative and their escort. The Northland Library and North Hills School District will host a digital boot camp for parents on October 20th from 9 a.m. to noon at the Northland Library. Please sign up on the library's website. The session is entitled, Your Child Has a Device, How Do You Keep Them Safe? North Hill School District will hold a Be Smart parent meeting and school police and meet the school police meet and greet on October 24th from 6.30 to 7.30 in the middle school LGI room. Please join us for a brief presentation about the Be Smart campaign, as well as meet and greet with all of the district's new school police officers, free child care, will be provided. Please join our Hands for Service Club and student council members in the high school's third annual Jake Wodowski's Monster, Monster Dash 5K and Spooky Stroll on October 27th at North Park Boathouse. All proceeds will benefit the local chapter of Make-A-Wish and the Children's Hospital Foundation. And those are the, some of the exciting things that occurred for the district in the month of September. About as exciting as a computer not working. That's right. Thank you, Dr. Marino. <laughs> we can now move on yet to our construction update. That would be Mr. John Thomas from Thomas and Williamson. So Lori called me the other day and said, uh, hey, can you stop up and tell everybody what's going on with uh, the Westview Vestibule? Not a very big project, but certainly uh, uh, a lot of challenges getting that little thing put together. Oh, I think we're fighting there, Jeff. Okay. So um, what, what is driving the progress and completion on the project, of course, is the deliveries of the materials. Now, you'll recall that 
in past years we've done projects we've done everything we could to use off the shelf materials like when we did the the uh, McIntyre edition so that we didn't have any fabrication going on to slow down the process unfortunately on the on the very small vestibule project we didn't have that luxury we had uh, a skylight that had to be fabbed to fill in the the hole in the vestibule roof we had a storefront that had to be fabricated steel that had to be fabricated and um, some some doors and windows as well so at this point what what's really driving the progress is the the, the deliveries of that that uh, that uh, those materials the um the roofing and sheet metal trim is has been available has been ready to go since uh, since last week uh, just trying to fit it in between uh, rainstorms uh, they started uh, working the other day and uh, had to had to stop they can it's only like a one or two day job to get the the roof on and by the way they are actually going to give you a, an entire new roof instead of a roof patch at no additional charge um, we're looking to receive and install the hollow metal work that goes through the front front wall where the window is now there will be a temporary door installed in that and you'll be able to use that as a temporary access until the final doors come and uh, at the same time they'll hook up the access control so you'll you'll function uh, in, a, in a temporary mode until the, the final pieces come in uh, the, the following week we'll have uh, the aluminum uh, trim panels arrive and uh, the installation of the, the raceways and uh, boxes for the, the, the one lighting fixture that goes in it. The following week, we'll be receiving the aluminum storefront, and that's really what most of the vestibule is, is constructed of. Uh, the glazing will come along with that, that's the glass. Uh, the handrail is available now, but they won't install that until the, the storefront is in. And then, of course, sealing all the joints once that's installed. Um, Follow, following that, we'll have the, the skylight is, is is manufactured, but it's being painted. It's coming, I, I believe, from California. Uh, it's a special kind of skylight that fits back in the in the corner of the building and self-supporting. Uh, after the skylight's installed, you can put your permanent door in, install the light fixture and the unit heater, and then uh, last but not least, and this is uh, this is uh, an issue throughout the whole construction industry doors everybody's waiting for for wood doors to arrive i don't know why but every job's doors are late there's a, a couple doors that have to go in from the vestibule into the office area um, i did provide a little sequence a little write-up i'm not going to read this whole thing but basically what this describes is uh, my people and kevin swindell finding a door that you have in stock that's going to be installed temporarily so you can operate the uh, the entry into the uh, into the office even before the vestibule is totally enclosed and just to give you an idea a better idea of of how this works um, the two doors uh, to the right those are the existing front doors right now the issue is you can go in those front doors and have someone can have free access to the school so even though you, you are buzzing them into those front doors, there's no constraint to prevent any, uh, any further ingress. So the, the vestibule addition uh, was constructed from the corner out, almost out to, the, out to the sidewalk. And the big challenge that made this project so complicated was, even though it's very small, was that your existing entry into the building is is not handicap accessible so we had to construct a handicap accessible entrance in the in the um in the captured vestibule so it made for steel fabrication sloping concrete etc and then we had to get as much length as we could which brought it the whole way out to the center of jesse's window which made it even trickier to join all the uh, the new construction up with the existing. Uh, as I said, your and th this is another point of confusion. I think a, peop a lot of people at the building don't really understand. 
there's only one side of the door that's going to be operational and it's going to have the the pass through window in it the bulletproof pass through window that when somebody arrives they'll get buzzed in here they'll be able to proceed through the vestibule hand over their license and other credentials at the at the pass through door the other side of the door is opaque it was originally opaque you've asked that we change that to have glass in it so that the ladies in the office can have uh, have more daylight coming in. Uh, once once they they uh, have their credentials screened, they'll be able to go through the door o only at that point. Uh, any questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, I understand what the timeline is now, but could you just provide everybody with some history about what caused the delays? Because originally this project was supposed to be done in September. Okay, actually I just did, but I'll, I'll go through them again. So. You have all of the materials that are coming from sometimes out of state, and those materials are being fabricated, and the deliveries to the contractor aren't coming quickly enough. There were also permit issues as well, right? Uh, not really. We, uh, we were able to start building without the permit. Okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'd just like to know, do you have a timeline of when you think this will be completed? Actually, let me go back a slide. If you look to this slide here, is it, can you guys read that over there? Okay. So the, the work is scheduled to be completed the week of, the, the work that we're looking at completing is that final installation of the door and the security film project will be complete week of 11-5. 11 11-5. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I'm confused about what you just said about the permit. Why would we think it was a good idea to start building without a building permit? Well, we, we thought we had an understanding that a permit wasn't going to be required because it was kind of a minimal project in nature. And there were some discussions going back and forth between the school district and the municipality. And um, somebody <laughs> from the municipality went on vacation, and there was a verbal understanding that it was okay to move ahead. So they moved ahead with the concrete, which um, generally, if you know anything about the construction industry, uh, it's not uncommon that you can proceed with your foundations before you have the building permit. And so that's what they did. But then there was a hold up when they discovered that they were not? There was a hold up that we didn't have the permit when they said, hey, you need a permit. And um, that unfortunately, well, that I don't want to say, uh, fortunately, was a non-critical delay because we're waiting for the materials. So, so work was basically suspended while the, okay. while the uh, there, there was no ongoing construction work because they're waiting for the materials to arrive. So you're saying that delay didn't have any impact? I'm saying it was a non-critical delay. If you understand. <laughs> Well, you know, some, I mean, this is really frustrating on the part of the school district because, mm -hmm. you know, we, we've spent a lot, an awful lot of time thinking about how to make our schools safer and invested a lot of time and energy. And this is something that we agreed on last spring. So, you know, it's really frustrating to sit here and hear that, okay, now it might be November by the time this is fully functional. I mean, you keep saying it's a small project, but it's an important project, especially for it's the It's a very important project. I, and I, I want to underscore there. You know, the, the district is not employing, you know, we usually work for you in a construction management capacity. You, everyone's aware of that, correct? Right. Yes. Okay. I'm not working in a construction management capacity on this project. We, we designed the vestibule for you, and I have some regular check-in that we do. We don't charge you for that. And I, I never charge you to come here in the evening to, to speak with you and bring you up to speed. But, I mean, you've been a long long-standing client we do whatever we can to help move things along but we're not doing procurement management we're not monitoring the the uh, the purchase of the materials uh, when when we were working on Ross you might recall we had a lot of trouble getting metal panels there I sent my people to Ohio to go to the factory and walk the floor and make sure everything was being fabricated you, you didn't hire me to do that here, and, and it's understandable why you didn't, because my my management fee would be more than the cost of the project. Yes, Mr. Nudie. I, I don't think people understand 
the scope of work here. Um, this is design and build, okay? Was it March or April we approved the project? You had to design it. We had to get it out to bid, find a contractor. Contractor came in, start doing the work. First thing that had to be done was the roof, I believe. Is that correct? No, the first thing that had to be done was they had to dig out yeah. the, the soil where the new slab went. But with the slab and then, then uh, uh, you had to do the roof. Delayed in the roof by, by rain. Then you had to come in and get the framing in. To get the framing in, you can't do the glass until you have the framing in to make the uh, measurements to get the appropriate glass. Is that correct? That's correct. So all that is delay. And uh, if you have an understanding of manufacturing and building, you can understand that easily. But that's all I have to say. No, I trust me, I wish it was going faster, too. I wouldn't have to be sending my people up there every week to check on the, on the contractors. Uh, that's coming out of my pocket. I'm not coming to you asking you for it, but um, it's in, in many cases it's people that the contractor has contracted with, and they're not delivering quickly. And that's it, not an uncommon thing in the industry right now. now like I said, in, in, in past years, we've been able to navigate around the delivery problem by buying all off-the-shelf materials uh, like the, the McIntyre project which is a building that's built almost entirely of off-the-shelf metal studs which is almost unheard of and that was that was done to make sure that we we weren't going to be victimized by a manufacturing uh, delay uh, I, I don't feel as though we had that luxury here we set out actually to design this as a prefabricated structure so that there wouldn't be a lot of construction on site. There's really very little construction on site. I hope everybody's aware of that. It's really installation as opposed to uh, construction. Anyone else? Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. We can now uh, move on to uh, education, the fun stuff. Mrs. Mathis. Thank you. We have two items under education this evening. The first is a request for the board to approve the academic calendar for the 2019 to 2020 school year as per the attached. Highlights would include uh, the first day for teachers would be August 13th, the first day for students would be August 20th, the last day for students would be May 28th, and graduation would be May 29th. The second item is uh, a request for the board to approve the acceptance of the Ready to Learn grant. The purpose of the Ready to Learn grant is to support research-based best practices in education. This grant will offset the costs associated with providing a high-quality, full-day kindergarten program aligned with the state's current academic standards, and the grant award is in the amount of $393,030. So uh, the superintendent recommends that the board approve education items one and two. Um, I personally have some comments on item one. We move to okay. discussion. Let's, let's, you're going to make a motion at least that we entertain yes. the motion, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Discussion? Mrs. Mathis, you're up first. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, first, I just want to say due to the nature of our schedule this month, this is a work session and a legislative uh, session as well. So normally there would be a work session where we would present the calendar, we would discuss it, uh, the public would have a little bit more time for feedback on it, and um, because we're going to be traveling to the PBSA conference at the end of or in the middle of October, this is also a legislative session, so that doesn't allow as much time for public review uh, for the calendar. And so just going forward, I'd like to be presented with some alternative options for the calendar that include a dedicated spring break, um, as well as possibly a later start date. Um, this is some feedback I've heard from the community, and um, I'd like to begin this process a little bit earlier in the near, uh, a little bit earlier in the year next year, so we could possibly be presented with some different options to evaluate the calendar. Are there any other comments? Okay. Uh, on item two, uh, the Ready to Learn grant, uh, what is the source of funding for that? The state. Okay. I, in the future, I'd appreciate if you identify what the sources of funding are for the grants. Thank you. <clears throat> any other comments? 
Okay, uh, all in favor to adopt the uh, motion of the two education items? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, I'm voting uh, against item number one, but for item number two. Okay. I am also two. the okay. same. Sandy and Ellie, uh, two no's, but that's just for item number one, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. You got and that, Lori? Uh, I'm yes, sorry. I'd like to yeah, add, I please. am voting yes for both of them because at this point in the year, I think we do need to move the calendar forward. But um, I would also like to see, you know, for long, more time for conversation sure. on the calendar. So um, I think maybe if we could start the calendar, we always, we run it, we often run into the PSBA. So mm -hmm. maybe if we start the calendar a little sooner, okay. um, we could have that conversation next, next year. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So you got those that voted A and A, yay and A. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you uh, Mrs. Massa. Let's move on to athletics and activities. That would be Ms. Cazero. I have three field trips. Wow. Um, the inaugural members of the History Club would like to travel to Washington, D.C. from March 15th to 18th to, I believe the words were, immerse themselves in history. Mm -hmm. um, the CADD cl Club would like to go to the BMW factory in Spartanburg, South Carolina, November 28th and 29th. And the band and chorus had previously um, requested to go to Washington, D.C. for the Cherry Blossom Festival, but now they are changing their request to go to New York City um, because of um, there were some changes in, um, they weren't able to get the academic, the musical, educational, and cultural experience that they were looking for in D.C. as a whole. So they were going to change the trip to, um, to New York. Um, so, so there's more cultural and entertainment. I, mean, I, I believe the av availability. Okay. As a former <laughs> DC <laughs> resident, there's plenty of culture there. Um. I, can, I can actually ad address that a little bit. Yeah. The um, the premier uh, piece for the band if, in DC was uh, there was a, a big public venue for them to perform. There was a parade, but there were um, lesser opportunities for the orchestra and the choir. And so now, because this is oh, a combined okay. yeah, trip, yeah. Oh, okay. um, gotcha. you know, the idea was some of the opportunities that they thought would be available, um, you know, weren't turning out to be in the judgment of the directors as great an opportunity for the other ones. Um, unlike last year when they went to Disney, everybody had, mm -hmm. there were great opportunities for everybody. Mm -hmm. So by going to New York, they were able to secure an opportunity that is, is just going to really give more kids a chance to participate and Great. just uh, be a better quality experience, you know, kind of for all of the groups. So it was more about, it, it's it's kind of a coordination thing, and, and it could be very well be a D.C. trip later you if, um, you, you know, it, it just had more to do with coordinating all the venues and making sure, sure that, that uh, everybody's experience, yeah. you know, was going to be at a really high level. Yeah, and I think there's enough overlap so. with the kids in those groups that it's great that they go on a exactly. combined trip. I think that's yeah, really nice. Exactly. Um, Just so everybody knows, the agenda says North York. They're going yeah. to New York. Yeah, so. I, I'm sorry, I should have said that. That so I okay. was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The details indicate that. I think that that's what New threw Mr. Wolgus off. Oh yeah, he wasn't yeah. real sure what was going on. Very North exciting York, trip. But New York was going to be. I've been to North York. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. The Amish. Excuse me, I noticed on all these field trips that we're responsible now for paying the subs and the uh, nurses. In the past, the groups had to pay for that. We didn't. So apparently that changed. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we always had them pay in the past. I don't uh, they did. Are that you sure? Paid. Uh -huh. I, didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't aware that we always yeah. didn't pay. Okay. We didn't pay, but now we're paying for the uh, subs and the nurses. Can we look into that? If you want to charge the kids more to go on the trips, we can certainly look into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you want to charge them more. I don't want to charge them anything. Just let them go. That's up to you. All right. I mean, the, 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 I, would, I would argue that the, the teachers have their, you know, the days that they can take off, and they're not actually taking off those days. They're using them for the students' enrichment. And um, you know the the cost of a substitute to allow a teacher to go on that kind of trip seems to me to be worth it. Certainly, but oh, yeah. I mean certainly we, we can look, look into, into it. Door. Absolutely, we'll fine. <coughs> we'll take um, I don't know why we started paying again. Yeah. We're trying to keep the cost down for the kids. To be honest with you, yeah. Jeff. I, I know I'm not saying that's the reason, but part it's of a it. good reason. It's a good reason, sure. The okay. super, superintendent recommends, if nobody else has anything, the superintendent recommends, and I so move that the board approve athletics and activities items one through three. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, 
A.W. Beatty, Mr. Nudy, it appears we don't have anything unless you have something you'd like to add. I have a, a couple of comments. Uh, today I attended the uh, principal's uh, meeting at uh, A.W. Beatty. It was a, um, a conference uh, held by the principal of A.W. Beatty, uh, invited basically all the uh, principals and uh, uh, guidance counselors uh, for a conference on an overview of what they're doing at Beatty. Um, I was very impressed with what's happening over there. You know, when I came on the board 10 years ago, maybe? Seven. I, yeah. And I think some of your older <laughs> board members would visualize Beatty as something like an alternative education school. Sure, not anymore. Um, yeah. So, and I'm glad to uh, admit in the last five years they've uh, uh, really turn the philosophy around there. Uh, they are tailoring the uh, uh, courses of study to uh, professions that the uh, uh, economy needs. And they're also looking down the road at what's going to be needed in five or ten years mm -hmm. to develop the curriculum for them. So I'm very, very happy with, with what I experienced today. Um, and part of that was uh, uh, the principal, Jason Watkins, uh, took over last year, and he gave a present presentation of what Beatty is doing, and um, they uh, are uh, <coughs> instituted a thing that's called 360 degrees, uh, 360 degrees outside or th outdoors program. It's an after-school function where they go out, they go on ski trips, hiking, fishing, um, all type of... Um, additional extracurricular activity and the it's all being chaperoned by the uh, uh, the faculty the faculty are doing it for nothing that's uh, a very 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 nice program mm -hmm. and I, I, I when I was there I was thinking this is something that should be presented to the operation operating committee uh, at, at Beatty and so the operating committee members to get a better idea of what's happening and what the future is at Beatty. And then I thought, and I just talked to um, Dr. Manorino, and I think we should invite him in to do a little presentation for us to get an idea of what's happening <coughs> at Beatty. Good idea. Yep, I'll see if he can be here in November. Huh? Pardon me? I'll yeah. see if he can be here in November. Okay, all right. So, and the other thing is uh, the uh, knock T. Uh, performance uh, reports were out from last year, and 40%, um, well, we had 15 students uh, took the exam, uh, six, uh, and six, well, a total of 13 um, placed advanced or competent, uh, so that's a total of 48%, and uh, only two out of the, uh, the attendants uh, uh, scored in the basic, uh, and we had none below the basic, so. Thank you. Great report. Thanks. There was uh, one more thing that the Beatty JOC did on um, last Thursday night at their meeting, and that was that they've decided to dedicate their conference center to Arlene Bender, and they're going to name that conference center after her. Wow. They're going to do this on the December 13th board meeting. Um, that's traditionally a time whenever uh, Beatty invites all of the board members out to Beatty for their holiday dinner. So if you could all put December 13th on your calendar, and hopefully you could make not only that dinner, but then um, that night at the board meeting where they could make that presentation um, about dedicating that conference center, and they're going to name it the Arlene J. Bender Conference Center at A.W. Beatty. So I thought that was a really nice yeah, move. Yeah, yeah, you'll get, a, you'll get an invitation from Eric uh, about that night. Um, they do a really nice dinner. Uh, for the board members, and that's all of the 81 board members in, in their nine districts. And so it would be nice if, if all of you could get there, if you could hold that on your calendar. And also, you get a point set up. And you get a point set up. <laughs> Probably uh, a tin of cookies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That's what I need. All priority. <clears throat> yeah, we'll have Jim Bender come too. Yes. That okay. Was, all right. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Nunez. Great update. Thank you so much. Uh, we can now move on to uh, personnel, and that would be Mr. Kelly. Thank you, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Wilgus. Uh, the personnel items are, be, are considered in executive session by the board. Uh, and therefore, our, uh, the superintendent recommends, and I so move, that the board approve personnel items <coughs> one through five. A second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Also, if I uh, 
A, uh, the North Hill School Board and the administration would like to acknowledge the 33 years of excellent service as a substitute teacher um, uh, provided by uh, Jean Hirschman, and so we wish Jean the very best in her retirement. Absolutely. Congratulations, Jean. Great. Thank you. Uh, community. Unbelievable. Yeah. Community Intergovernmental Relations. Uh, Mrs. Reed, doesn't look like we have anything under I don't know if you have anything you want to add. No, we have nothing in essence to vote on. However, I want everybody to know that uh, we did meet with uh, Mr. Hall in regard, and Mr. Witherall in regard to Ross Township coming to us wanting to get involved in tax assessment appeals. They believed that we should look for, we should move forward doing that, that there's money there for them. And we listened to both sides, and we made a decision. We're not get. We're just keeping it the way it is. We're not going after residential property. That's Thank you. Basically, it. Thank you, uh, Mr. Newdy. Looks like we don't have anything under policy. Unless you, is there anything you want to add? Oh, well, the. Um, uh, I guess the the hot item right now is the, uh, the graduation requirement legislation. It's slowly moving through uh, uh, the House. It's Senate Bill. Uh, uh, 1095. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to thank the uh, members of the administration and the board members that did send uh, emails to the representatives uh, that did move it from the floor. It is now in the Appropriations Committee uh, because it, they have to look at the funding aspects of it. It has to go back to the House floor for final vote and then over to the Senate for reconciliation and hopefully pass it this year. Uh, the only problem is I think there are, the Senate only has four voting days left this year, and the House has uh, seven, I guess. So, And if it doesn't happen this year, it goes back and has to go through the whole mill again next year. So, we, so, we, so maybe if we could just get another uh, uh, email out to um, the uh, representatives, uh, and have them and senators and have them move this bill through so it's finished by the end of the year i received a nice letter from adam ravenstall because i emailed him in mm -hmm. regard to support that bill one right so. so it's early october they have four days left and then they're done for the year yes well okay. hey, it's election great. year okay good yeah. oh, that's a great job <laughs> all right want and door knock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay sorry all right, uh, we can move on to uh, finance, Dr. Nolish. Okay, thank you. We have um, <clears throat> six items for action. Uh, the general fund bills, the construction fund bill, which includes the final payment for the McIntyre project, um, capital project fund bills, food service fund bills, budget transfers, and payroll for the month of September. The superintendent recommends, and I so move, that the board approve finance items one through six. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. There's also two informational items if you want to review the revenue summary for 2017-18 as of July 2018. Those are the unaudited figures and uh, the summary related to that, the summary of revenue and expenditures as of July, for 17-18 as of July 2018. Uh, Dave, not to put you on the spot, but I, I looked, I didn't, nothing seemed to jump out. Was there anything there that... that no, I think we're in, in it's really pretty much shape. What we what we forecasted. We okay, uh, which looked like the way to me too. Thanks. All right, uh, support services. That would be Mrs. Spade. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have four articles here. Okay. Um, the first one is that the board approve a grant award up to twenty five thousand from Women for a Healthy Environment for Lead in Water Testing, and rem remediation. Remediation <laughs> per attached. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Uh, so I have to find this on my computer. My computer's a little goofy, like me. Um, where'd it go? Oh, no. Over. Go. It's coming. No, I don't want that. Sorry about this. That's all right. What are you looking for, the grant? I find it. The? That the board of directors okay. award the bid for dual purpose copy paper to contractor <laughs> paper group and company at their low bid of $21,882. Okay. Third, bread. 
As soon as this comes up. Can you believe this? That the Board of Directors award the bid for bread for the remainder of the year 2018 to 2019 school year to Schwarber's Baking Company. Fourth, security cameras. That the Board of Directors, where'd it go? Where'd it go, Pat? We're, we're rejecting, or we're, we're being asked to reject that. Yeah, bid, right, we're being year. asked okay. to reject that. That the Board of Direct... <laughs> this machine don't like me. <laughs> there you go. Okay. okay. That the Board of Directors rejects all bids received for security cameras. Can I ask why? We're going to rebid we're the project. Still. Yeah. Yeah, I had talked to Mr. Hall, and... He had mentioned that too many um, cameras were put out for bid, and we need less cameras now, so we're going to rebid it. Is that proper? Yeah. Correct. Okay, the superintendent recommends, and I so move, that the board approve support services items one through four. Second. Thank Is you. there any discussion? I, I have a question. I just would like Ms. Spade to confirm that the bread meets all of the federal um, standard guidelines. We were told that it absolutely does. Thank you. Okay. I want bread works bread. Is uh, uh, no discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, that pretty much covers the uh, agenda items that we have one left, uh, one item left, it's, which is public comments on non-agenda items. Is there anybody would wish to address the board at this time prior to adjournment? from our standing room only crowd. Okay, great, thank you. I will uh, uh, um, motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. Meeting adjourned, thank you.